What is going on my fellow nerds? Brace of Otter here with part 1 of the post I have put up explaining my team's ideas on the first thing we could fix in Destiny 2, which is the weapons. Now, the thing about a sequel is that we don't want the same content we got in the original, right? So, with that said, we didn't want to return to Destiny 1's original weapon setup. In fact, I like Destiny 2's idea more than Destiny 1's, but I definitely feel they should have taken it further. So, let's expand on that by taking a little trip down memory lane on how Destiny 1 worked with the legendary weapons. The game worked off a pure RNG context when looting gear, as well as having to use the PC gear to unlock the perks or spend modes of light to unlock those perks. Meaning, I had to either A, unlock the weapon perks by playing with the weapon, or B, farm modes of light by playing the game and unlock the perks. Either way, I as the player was forced to play the game in some fashion in order to unlock a weapon's max potential. The sights and three perks associated with the weapon were randomly generated from a pool of perks that the weapon could have. Now, in year 3 of Destiny 1, Aya Saluna was essentially the god weapon of PvP if you could get the sight and three perks needed, which were Sure Shot Is, Outlaw, Small Boar, and Luck in the Chamber. If we take a look at this little clip shown, we can see what we could have for an Aya Saluna in all the possible roles. Use some statistics with all the possible roles of an Aya Saluna, then we have ourselves a 1 in 1,300 chance to get the god roll Aya Saluna. Holy cow. And for those who played for Destiny 1, then you know how long it took to find one Aya Saluna. It was the role of a lifetime to achieve, but there were people who had it. Now, let's go back to present day and look at the Destiny 2's weapon setup. All the weapons are completely static rolled. If we look here in the clip shown, you can see that once I find a weapon, I can use any of the traits, which I only have a selection of two of, and use any of the sights. They're just fixed rolls. Nothing's RNG based. I can infuse it with any other weapon of the same type. It just, it just takes all customizability and RNG based perspective out of the equation, except for the mod slot which I think was a great idea, but we should take it a step further in the direction of Slayer Age's solution. What this does do, which I think is a good thing, is one, it appeals to a more casual player base, so people aren't pressured to find the 1 in 1300 drop and can enjoy the weapon when they find it. And two, it gives the weapon an identity, meaning the weapon is its own thing. No other weapon has the exact perks that it has, sort of. There are blues that copy the legendary stats to every weapon. The legendary just allows a legendary mod to be inserted for increased power level. An example would be Madrugada SR2 and Mananen SR4. One is blue and the other one is legendary, but they both have the exact same perks and sights as seen here. So definitely adding more weapons to give more variety to the game would be nice. But future DLCs are going to do this, so I'm not too worried about it. So with Destiny 1, we had RNG to a weapon, and with Destiny 2, we have a defined identity to a weapon. But I believe we can add a kind of Call of Duty element here to the weapons, as well to add customizability. This way, we can have an identity for the casual player base, RNG for the more elitist players, and customizability for both parties. As well, we want to add the aspect of Destiny 1 in that I have to play the game in order to enjoy the weapon to its max potential. So how do we do this? Well, this is what my team came up with. So for the identity of a weapon, we believe the frame, the sights, and the third perk should be static. So let's take a random weapon. For this scenario, we'll choose better devils. The adaptive frame makes it a 140 round per minute mid damage hand cannon. Three sights modify only one of three stats being better range, stability, or handling. So for better devils, we could have fast draw, steady hand, sure shot, each give a boost to handling, stability, and range. And for the third perk, we can keep it as it is with explosive rounds. So now we have this weapon's identity. It has a 140 RPM mid damage hand cannon, it has sights that can modify an attribute, and it has explosive rounds. So whether you find one better devils or a hundred, you will always get to feel and experience that part of the weapon. Now, the first perk of a weapon seen here, we feel should be RNG based. So for better devils, we could have all the hand cannon perks available as such possibilities to drop for the second perk. 
So now we have 12 possible perks that could drop for your better devils when you find it. So for whatever perk you want to modify the performance of the weapon, you have a 1 in 12 chance to find for the first perk. This adds a little grind element to the game for elitist players, and now if they want to find the perfect better devils role, they have to play the game in order to find it. Now bear with me for a second, but let's theorycraft what we could do to make mods awesome. So for the mod slot, as of now, we have only one kinetic mod. Let's turn that into three different kinetic mods that boost one of the three attributes to a weapon, being impact damage, reload speed, and magazine size. The energy mods can stay the same. They can modify the type of damage it does, but the kinetic mods can modify one of these three attributes. Now, for all three, obviously there has to be balance work done, as to not modify the weapon's damage too high to make better devils two-shot someone with headshots with an increased impact kinetic mod, but enough to make a slight difference in PvE to bullet sponge majors, ultras, and bosses. And the same goes for reload speed, and the same would obviously go with the extended mag. But the point is, is that if I were to choose one, I give up the power of the other, but it's not that if I choose one, it's just better than everything else. It gives sort of a personalization for just that kinetic mod slot. Now, let's do something a little crazy. Let's add a second mod slot. This second mod slot will replace the second perk of the weapon. And you can insert any of the perks labeled above, except one that is a copy of your first perk from the RNG drop. So you can't stack flared magwell perks. Make it so only a legendary mod of that perk can be inserted into that mod slot. So now we have a lot more mods to collect, and they have a much cooler purpose for our weapon than just adding power level or damage type. So we go out and find our, say, three blue dragonfly mods, combine them into a legendary dragonfly mod, and can now insert it into the second mod slot. Now, my better devils has the dragonfly perk added to it. Pretty cool, right? So, what's the caveat? Where's my incentive to have to play with this weapon or just the game in general to fully customize it? Remember in Destiny 1 where you had to play with the weapon or armor equipped to unlock the perks on that gear or you could spend Moza Light to upgrade it? Let's add that to the weapons mod slots. In order to be able to put mods into the mod slots on my better devils, I have to either A. Kill targets with it or B. Spend legendary shards to upgrade it. Now we have some purpose to the legendary shards. So, for the first slot, which is the kinetic mod slot, let's say we have to acquire 300 points to unlock it, and each of the following gives this many points. Minion kill, 1 point. Legendary shard, 3 points. Player kill, 5 points. This means I have to kill 300 minions, which is about 7 to 10 strikes worth, spend 100 legendary shards, or kill 60 players in the crucible with this weapon in order to unlock that first slot. Now for the second slot, make it 450 points, and the same rules apply to that. That means in order to have both mod slots, I have to kill a total of 750 minions, spend 250 legendary shards, or kill 150 players in the crucible with better devils in order to unlock both weapons mod slots. And of course, I could do 3 strikes and get 200 minion kills, which is 200 points, get 50 crucible kills, which is 250 points, and spend 100 legendary shards, which is 300 points. And now I get 200 plus 250 plus 300 points, which is 750 points. And now I have both slots open. So I can do a combination of all the activities or do just one activity and still unlock both the mod slots. So what do we have in conclusion to the weapons? One, we have a weapons identity. Better Devils is a 140 round permanent explosive shot hand cannon with three sights. Two, we have RNG to add incentive to farm for a specific first perk on Better Devils. 3. We have custom ability to make a weapon have a personal performance attached to it. And 4. We have incentive to use that specific weapon to unlock the max potential of that weapon's performance slots. Now, let's combine everything into a scenario. I just found a Better Devils with the first RNG perk being Outlaw. I choose the Sure Shot hand cannon sight for better range. I go farm mods and create the magazine size legendary mod and dragonfly mod. I get kills with the weapon and strikes, PvP, and spend some of my banked legendary shards to unlock both mod slots. 
I put in the magazine size kinetic mod and dragonfly mod into both mod slots. Now I have a 140 round per minute mid damage hand cannon with increased range, outlaw, dragonfly, explosive rounds, and 13 shots in the chamber. Sounds a bit like Fatebringer, but I had to build it and earn it through playing that weapon. Could I still wreck PvE content and people in the Crucible without farming the mods and mod slots? Of course I could, so it's still casual friendly. But because I played the game a little bit more, I get a tiny advantage in PvE content because I farmed for Outlaw and Dragonfly. It allows casual players to enjoy the identity of an AoE hand cannon, but allows elitist players to build their beloved Fatebringer.